Okay, uh, I begin again, sorry for, uh, uh, for this. So Studio Gang, uh, founded uh, by, by Jeannie Gang in Chicago, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through some of her works. Uh, so uh, uh, this is a, a tower she proposed for, uh, for St. Louis with apartments. Uh, she built one, she recently, recently completed one in, uh, in San Francisco, uh, somehow similar. This one I don't think uh, uh, was built yet and uh, it might not even be built. But, um, you know, her architecture is, uh, you know, uses geometry uh, in a um, rather uh, explicit way. Uh, and uh, but but you'll see she doesn't have she's against a signature architecture and I think that's good. Uh, the American Museum of Natural History uh, is a work in progress. The construction started, uh, and um, you know her work. This particular work uh, fits in the in in that section that I I called uh, the cave revival. Uh, a certain part of the building uh, will look like this, the central part, the public part, the atrium. Um, so she has very large works now uh, uh, in, you know, in, in construction. And, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, for a, for a single woman to achieve, uh, I don't know if she's single any longer, but when she, she ran her office for um, a certain number of years um, alone. And, uh, you know, she achieved uh, a lot of uh, attention after she completely completed the, the Agua Tower in Chicago, which you are going to see. <clears throat> but this, this, this project, this building uh, uh, is in uh, New York City, the Museum of Natural History. Um, She's an interesting architect and, 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 and uh, she's interested also in social issues and, uh, and um, uh, she's also interested in ornament, you know, but in a discreet way, essentially she's a modern, uh, modern architect. Um, she received training at Harvard. She worked for uh, Rem Kolhas um, and um, then she returned to Chicago and uh, and began to, uh, you know, uh, I think she began her, her practice. Uh, I I chose to talk about her. Uh, I could have talked about uh, Lina Bobardi or uh, Benedetta Taliabue. I wanted to talk about a woman architect. And uh, I chose her. I could have chosen another one. I still think there is some discrimination in the world against women. And, uh, and uh, that's why I, I, I thought it would be a good day to talk about a woman architect. Uh, it was so difficult. You know, it took so many years for women to be able to assert themselves in, in this field. I saw pictures with uh, the studio of Otto Wagner, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century, only males, only males. There was no woman. Uh, there was a brilliant uh, woman architect in the office of Frank Lloyd Wright, who was abused by Frank Lloyd Wright. You know, she was the best draftsperson he had. In fact, she was not, she was more than a draftsperson, but he used her as a, as a, as a draftsperson. Marion Griffith, and uh, um, you know, uh, I, I think it was uh, and still is uh, a field where women are not uh, offered uh, easily um, uh, the equality they deserve. That's why I think uh, you know cases like uh, Ginny Gang and uh, you know even Zaha, of course, uh, are rare, very very rare. And these women make a lot of sacrifices. They don't have families. They don't have children. Uh, it, it's tough. But what do you do when you love architecture and you have talent and uh, you know uh, you have a lot to say about architecture? You you are supposed to, you know, to assert yourself and 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 function in 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 that realm, 
For men, it's easier, actually, you know, but not for women. Still, this is a structure she did uh, uh, before the uh, Museum of Natural History. Uh, and so she has, a, I think she's able to operate in, in that uh, interstitial space between structure and ornament. Uh, but you'll see her works are indeed uh, not uh, signature works. Um, and uh, she's rigorous. Uh, here she is. Uh, and she's rigorous, but she's also, um, uh, you know, um, at times at least, uh, taking a, a poetical license, so to speak, uh, through you know, uh, elements of what might be considered the ornamental design, which even here is, is present, you know, it is structure, but it's also a, a kind of an ornamental nature, you know, uh, so in a way the structure becomes ornament and the ornament becomes structure, not in the <laughs> the extreme, uh, you know, uh, almost pathological way in which uh, Shakira Hamad uh, made her proposal. This is something else, you know, more acceptable. And in fact, it was built. It might be, I don't know, I'm not a seer, uh, but uh, it might be she will receive soon uh, the Prisker Prize. That's, that's what... Uh, some people expect. The Agua Tower, which brought her a lot of attention. Well, about this project, she had to, to deal with a building that was already designed. She only had to change the facades, the look of the building, because the developer was afraid that the building was too plain. And so she didn't have a word to say about the, 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 the whole conception of the building. In this case, she just modify the you know the the facade the the look of the building but she did it dramatically so dramatically that she received a lot of attention and look at it this is what she did uh, you know she played with the balconies but she played with the balconies in this way that uh, contradicted in a way the what was behind the balconies you know uh, a regular prismatic uh, Cartesian building. You would say it's not a very profound uh, gesture, and it's not. But uh, the effect uh, was uh, was uh, immediate and uh, and um, you know radical. Uh, you know because these buildings stood out, but it stood out also in terms of its symbolism, even its name, Agua Tower. Agua means water. And here you have the fluctuations and the, the, the uh, capriciousness of water. Water, which is considered to be weak, a weak element. Well, it's not weak at all. In fact, Lao Tzu or Lao Tse, the great uh, mystic in China, who was a very wise man, he said that uh, water, which appears to be much less strong than the rock, in time erodes the strongest rock. And he was right. And so in a way, what Lao Tzu said was, uh, he was talking about the, the power of weakness, of apparent weakness. And so the feminine, you know, the feminine principle also appears to be weaker than the masculine principle. But the truth is, uh, <laughs> not quite like this, um, you know, so just like water and, and the woman is usually, you know, connected with water and the man is connected with fire, but water can extinguish fire, as you well know. So, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the feminine is, 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 uh, is, is at least potentially quite, quite powerful. And I think uh, this, this building, uh, I mean, look, compare it with the other buildings, is a dramatic change. Although she worked only cosmetically because that's what she was asked to do. But, you know, it took courage, you know, to do something like this in Chicago, which is a very conventional conformist city right now. I lived there for six years. I know what I'm talking about. 
It's a patriarchal city. All these towers, left and right, are actually patriarchal structures. And to have a woman, you know, uh, polemically asserting herself in this way was, was, uh, was a big surprise. But she was very successful because otherwise, uh, afterwards, she began to receive uh, commissions and, uh, you know, uh, very important commissions. Now, I have seen this building with my own eyes. It is still cold because of the nature of the materials used uh, from afar. It looks very grayish and metallic. Uh, but in these photographs uh, is, is uh, certainly very interesting. And uh, I think she, she, she did the most in, in, uh, that she was able to in, 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 in such a, you know, it was a difficult uh, task. You see her sketch here, you know. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, the, the Agua Tower is now one of the most admired and talked about uh, skyscrapers in Chicago. And uh, Chicago has other towers of some significance. I invited her to, to enter the Zoom uh, here, the Zoom platform uh, on um, on the, I think on the on the summer solstice, the day of the summer solstice, and um, she didn't respond to my email. Although we exchanged some emails, and then uh, after the presentation, I discovered that she did write to me, but I didn't check my email during the presentation, asking me if the presentation was still on. I think she was interested to to participate. But maybe in the future, we'll, uh, I'll invite her again, and maybe we'll have a chance to, uh, to talk with her, because she's an interesting person and uh, one of the most accomplished uh, architects today, men and women alike. Um, anyway, um, I think this is a little bit problematic here. You see the, 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 there is a fracture here, you know. Uh, something seems to be wrong. Um, you realize in, in that particular place that the building is actually uh, Cartesian and then uh, that the balconies are just, uh, you know, almost added to a structure that is very different. But I, I, I still think she, she did something interesting. And um, yeah, you see. She, she designed, uh, the, you know, this almost second skin. I sent her once some images of, uh, of some of my works done in Archicad and she wrote back, she said, fabulous paintings then. I said, they are not paintings, they are, they are done with architect. They are, they are supposed to be buildings, but to her, they look like uh, paintings, although they were not paintings at all. Plus, architect, as you know, works with uh, architectural elements, walls, roofs, uh, you know, slabs and so on. Talking about slabs here, there are other workers working on them. Um, Anyway, it moves me, you know, such such images where you have a lot of people, you know, working to 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 bring to life uh, the vision of someone, because yes, architecture is a collective effort, and uh, I guess that's her signature. Uh, at the bottom. Uh, she teaches now at Harvard, at Yale, and Yale. Uh, of course, uh, all the doors open for her because of the success she had with this tower, and you'll see a few other interesting things by her. Uh, so, you know, this was the first skyscraper built in Chicago by a woman as lead architect. But as I said, she only played with uh, the the uh, the outside of the building. 
you know, not so it, it's not totally appropriate to say that. But she built now other skyscrapers, both in uh, in, in Chicago and uh, and San Francisco. And uh, from the very beginning, not just working with the with the you know with the with the balconies. But you can tell that this is a different sensibility. It is a feminine sensibility. It has fluidity. It has a lyricism that men usually are trying to avoid. Um, so we have two systems here, if I can use uh, the word system. The one within, the male, and the one uh, out or outside, the female. And, uh, you know, uh, we can talk about this, you know, there are two different ways of being in the world, not just designing or drawing. Now this is a uh, yeah it's an announcement about the, you know these are very expensive apartments in all these buildings you know in, in, you know they sell through Christie's and so on you know uh, the iconic of uh, 2.8 million and so on these are for gods you know not for uh, to me it is depressing actually but she also has uh, social concerns. And I hope she will build also uh, social housing, not just this uh, glamorous, uh, you know, uh, uh, buildings for uh, for yuppies. Frank Gary in New York. Now uh, I wanted to show this building by Gary because, you know, there is a certain similarity, although there are also differences between what Gary did and what uh, Ginny Gang did. So we, there is a trend now, you know, it's not, uh, it's, it's not, you know, incredibly, uh, you know, original. There is a trend to bring uh, fluidity in and to problematize Cartesian, Cartesian uh, uh, you know, mentalities, so to speak, and forms with, uh, with something else. So I, w I would call it the return of the repressed. You know, and uh, the repressed was, and to an extent still is, uh, the feminine. Uh, that's why also the, the ornament is coming back, because the, the ornament was also repressed. Uh, and so these fluidities, they, they do assert the return of, of what was uh, for a long time, uh, uh, you know, forbidden. So, or a form of sensibility that uh, you know needs needs to accept itself again, and it does. Um, so again, this is not Ginny uh, Gang; it's Frank Gehry. Um, here she is uh, on uh, talking about the train station. She's on the you know on the railways, uh, and I like this picture of her because. I, it's almost a portrait of the woman as a rebel. Because I think she, despite her success and even conformity, because, you know, to ar arrive at this level of accomplishment and build skyscrapers, you must be able to, you cannot just be a, a guerrilla worker or a, you know, a rebel. But in this picture, she's shown, I think, as a woman who has a, if not a liking, but an understanding of the other side, even the way, you know, she's portrayed, you know, with this, you know, this rather desolate uh, landscape. Anyway, here she is with, uh, in a school, by uh, having no children, she's uh, dedicating some life for uh, some time for, uh, you know, uh, social activities and educational activities in the, in the school. Uh, I guess she's in her office here. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, she also has uh, Romanian war, uh, uh, interns or something because once I, I sent her a um, uh, message which had a part in Romanian and I apologized and she said it's not a problem, there is someone in the office or there are people in the office who speak Romanian. Now, this is... Uh, uh, even this fact, you know, uh, working for in conjunction with a dance group and exploration of uh, the intersections of physics, dance, and architecture. So she has an interest in interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity. 
uh, at least uh, the level at this level in in a school um, so as opposed to Zaha Hadid, for example, she's not a prima donna, you know, or I hope she will not become one, you know, and she, she also has a, a connection with lower strata of society, not just with the elite like Zaha Hadid. Now here we see, because she competed with other architects for a building for uh, uh, that uh, film director of, uh, Star Wars, uh, Luca, George Lucas, uh, and the building on the left is hers, on the right is by mad architects from China. Uh, and uh, I think we'll arrive at, uh, at their project. This is an interesting theater she did with a, a mobile structure that uh, I hope I come back to this, sorry. Uh, sorry, I, uh, this, this presentation is not as well organized as I would have liked it to to be and I apologize. This was a project for a, for a, an ecological uh, building, uh, institutional building relating to ecology, but it was not built. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, it was very publicized and she was supposed to build it. Now this one was built, the solar carve. And I'm afraid in this presentation, I don't have images of it uh, built, uh, but I, I hope I have a, a few relevant pictures here. It was her idea that the, the, the solar light could carve just like a sculptor, uh, the, the prism, the architectonic prism. And it was built like this. Uh, and, uh, he, you know, she tries to connect with the, with the trajectory of the sun uh, on the sky. Um, um, I, I'm not very sure if, if these are, uh, you know, uh, truly the, the engines of, of, of her forms, because I did never really understood uh, very well. But I mean, the intention is good. I, I just don't know if, if uh, you know, uh, indeed, uh, you know, light, the solar light uh, acts uh, concretely uh, at these angles at certain times of the day and the year to, to model uh, the building. But, but the building was built and uh, I regret now, I, uh, this is a presentation I prepared like two years ago. And in the meantime, it was built. You see there are, I call them positive erosions. You know, the building, the prism would have come like this, but it is eroded and this erosion provoked something you know rather interesting compared to all the buildings uh, around so it's, it's her non-conformism that makes us stand out so did you know that the best angle for glass <clears throat> to keep a chicago apartment warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer is 71 degrees well architect studio gang have designed an entire high-rise building based on that optimum angle with solar access and shading as its core concept. Aside from maximizing energy efficiency through passive solar design and being absolutely beautiful, uh, whoever wrote this, the angular surfaces also create a shimmering prismatic effect. Solstice on the park will be aiming for lead silver certification with a host of other echo features. Anyway, uh, so this is another uh, building uh, where she worked with uh, <clears throat> these uh, uh, glass panels at 71 degrees. Uh, even here, it's not very clear to me in, in, in what way in the, this, this, this angle is uh, adding something beneficial, but I, I am tempted to trust her. Uh, maybe one day we'll have the occasion to ask her. But what I think is important is that she doesn't neglect, she thinks of the sun, she thinks of the um, relationship between the sun, the sunlight and the building. And I think th this is a, a positive attempt. Uh, and also the effect on the aesthetics of the building uh, are also uh, presumably and hopefully uh, beneficial. 
Um, okay. But again, you know, these are not apartments for everybody, obviously. Now, this is a, was, a, was a hospital that was pro, pro, proposed uh, by her to complete, uh, to, to, to be built above a hospital built by, uh, um, you know, a former famous Chicago architect Goldberg. Uh, but I understood that building was actually destroyed uh, at the one at the, at the bottom with the cylinders. So hers was also not built. Very sad that they destroyed that building because, you know, I'm talking about this building. It's, it's sad because it was a good building. But, uh, you know, developers do whatever they think is, uh, uh, you know, bringing in more money. That's all they think about, you know, making more money. They don't think about preserving a building that has integrity and is interesting, like this one. Okay, maybe the aesthetics are not those of today, but he was a, a good architect. And this was the plan of, of his uh, building a hospital, actually. And uh, Ginny Gang was supposed to, I mean, she did a project to, uh, you know, develop the, the building uh, uh, above what Goldberg did. Here is the architect whose building was demolished. Uh, and uh, yeah, now this, this was a, a lecture she gave in 2014. I discovered this image on the web. Uh, I don't know where she, you know, she gave this lecture. Anyway, this was the title, What Mammals Want. I don't know what mammals want. Maybe she knew or knows hey, mammals. Any of a class of warm-blooded higher vertebrates that nourish their young with milk secreted by mammary glands have the skin usually more or less covered with hair and include humans. Yeah. Uh, she also participated at the Venice Biennial uh, a few times. Uh, for example, at one uh, um, uh, biennial that I saw, she proposed a, a structure that would uh, hide within the base of a skyscraper and then through mobility would come out and create an, uh, a seating area for a possible uh, stadium or something like this. Uh, what you see on the right is that theater that I, I said had a mobile part and you see the, the, the triangles of the ceiling of the roof opening up at certain times when the, the weather uh, allowed it. So here is a, um, a, you know, a project for the Academy of Global uh, uh, Citizenship. Uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't like very much these renderings with the black uh, human silhouettes, you know, this, they are a little bit ominous. But maybe she wanted to express a certain pessimism about the role of, of the humans in this world. Because I know she's very concerned with, with birds and animals. And, uh, you know, she understands that we cannot continue to... But I don't know. I'm only presuming. I just don't like graphically these, uh, uh, you know, human silhouettes that are so black. Anyway. Uh, So this is just a project. It was not it was not built. Now here she they released the new renderings for the latest Chicago is the same one uh, in Chicago. But as far as I know, it was not built. Uh, here she is in a school with with some some students. You know, if she had children, probably she would not have had time for this. But she probably misses having children because it must be. Uh, difficult for a woman not to have children, I think. Maybe more than for a man. Um, okay, this was another project, um, you know, to, to create some kind of pavilions for a, a market. Uh, again, you see some kind of a return of the plants, the vegetables, the sunlight. Uh, there is a concern here 
you know, in black and white, you see on the left, the cars running madly on the highway and on the right, we see something else. So she's trying to balance, you know, the, the excesses of one kind of activity with, with something else. In this case, you know, a vegetables market. It's also in a certain way, some kind of a return of nature, uh, you know, uh, domesticated and exploited still because, you know, but, but still nature somehow. Uh, no, no, she, she has a, a, a you know, a rebellious side, I think, and it is this rebellious side, but as, uh, as Elizabeth Diller said, and I don't really like Elizabeth Diller, but she, she said with, with a language that I also don't like very much, maybe something true. She said, you know, the trick is to be outrageous, but not offensive. And I don't like the word trick, but there is some truth here. You know, how can you be outrageous, but not offensive? Although, I don't think the goal of any artist or, you know, any creator in any field should be to be so-called outrageous. But yes, you normally, you, you, you would like to arrive at a certain level of creativity and inventiveness. Uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, you know, one of her other projects and proposals, she, she made many, many. Uh, this is that theater that I, I told you about, the origami-shaped star-like theater that opens and closes like flower petals. This is an early work, one of her earliest works, and it was built, as you see. No, she, she is a builder, you know, she's not just playing with forms, she, she is a builder, she, you, you can tell, you know, she's also concerned with structure. And uh, her buildings are, uh, you know, coherently uh, displaying knowledge of uh, you know, structure. Now this is an uh, I think it's a it's a good project a boathouse for uh, uh, women who trained uh, you know as as uh, um, sportives in 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 in, in this uh, in this sport in this field uh, and um, you'll see there are interesting interesting things happening here in this building. Uh, you know, it's a sports facility, but uh, besides its utilitarian side, as architecture, I think is uh, uh, well done and has uh, interesting parts. Uh, I hope I have images with the ceiling, in particular with the roof. This is the plan. It's close to the river. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you see how the, how the ceiling is, you know, it doesn't have a straight geometry in fact it connects with the uh, i don't know how it is called the the helix of the of the boats um, so he connected architecturally with an element of the you know the predominant object if i can call it so may i guess i can uh, used in in these spaces even here there is this uh, play with uh, with the roofs uh, with uh, you know sloping in opposite directions So there is structure, and even structuralist to an extent in her works, 
but there is also a deviation. Uh, there is some kind of a deviant architecture as well, where she problematizes uh, structure and uh, that's why there is a certain level of uh, ambiguity somehow. Now, uh, you know, that's how someone described the design to echo the rhythms of rowing. Um, but, but still the architecture is very, you know, simple, but there are also complexities as you can see in the diagram on the right lower corner. Uh, and, uh, you know, to do both, I don't think it's so easy that she, she succeeded. I did a terrible thing uh, about a year and a half ago. I saw uh, um, announcement. I saw an announcement about uh, uh, a new airport in Chicago that to me appeared very banal. And uh, I wrote to her. I said, uh, "Jeannie, why why don't you design it? You know, you do a much better job." And I, it actually, it was designed by her, but I didn't know. Actually, the the, the airport in itself. Uh, again, you know this. It is unbelievable. Please forgive me. I, I don't know what to do with, with these telephones. Hello? Hello? Da, vă rog, nu pot să vorbesc acum. Sunați-mă după la revedere. I don't believe this. Uh, I, I, this is the last time I ordered food. I, I am tired of them, of their phones. Uh, sorry, you know. Again, I, 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 my, my balance is is uh, is becoming uh, weaker and weaker. Uh, they are trying to be kind, but uh, you know they don't know. I, I, I give talks on 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 Zoom, and you know the telephone rings, and uh, I also don't like telephone mobile phones at all. I hate them. But uh, somebody gave me a mobile phone, and uh, I, I guess I have to use it. I don't have another phone, but I hate it. And nobody calls me except when I give uh, talks now on, on Zoom. It's unbelievable. Forgive me. Oh, this is the second time that this happened. Uh, no problem. No, no, no. I, I'm very, very agitated. I, I feel like throwing that uh, mobile phone through the window uh, right now. Uh, Anyway, um, so I continue. This is the, the you know, this, this work that I, I, I <laughs> look what she says. Without an intellectual construct, life is boring. Well, in, in her own way, the way she put it uh, um, is, uh, I, I, I think is, uh, is uh, well, we, is, there is more to it, but, but I think she is correct that I wouldn't say that, I, I don't know, something is a little bit off here, but essentially she, she, she seems to say that, you know, uh, there, there seem to be the, an, a necessity for something more than just, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the workings of the mind are important. And uh, anyway, a meta-reality or, a, if, if you want, you know, like Wolf Freaks, for example, said, if you only think of architecture, you only get architecture. So he was striving towards a meta architecture. And I see somehow something similar here, because what does she mean by an intellectual construct? You know, and what does it, she mean by life is boring or architecture is boring? There need to be something more than, than just what is seen and so on. So this is the, you know, the, the so-called concept uh, uh, formalized, I mean, expressed formally of, of, of the roofing uh, and the ceiling of, uh, of uh, ah, you know, this phone, you know, and everything was recorded, even this. Maybe it's interesting, you know, there are these uh, crazy phones, you know, but now I couldn't stop the recording or I could have, I don't know. I, I, I it agitates me a lot, uh, 
the mobile phone, uh, the impertinence of the mobile phone, uh, because I think they are very impertinent, these little phones, um, you know, disturbing the masters or the master. Anyway, uh, we continue because I, I also have to rush. Here she is with the mayor of Chicago. The mayor of Chicago is on the right. And uh, I don't know. Anyway, the opening of the building, uh, cutting the, the red ribbon and the river waiting for the, for the boats. And who said life is not uh, interesting? I guess this is her office. Um, here she is giving a lecture. Uh, if you look at her hand, you, you realize that this is, she is not a, a sensualist. And I think she's a woman who also knew something about suffering. I mean, just looking at her hands, you know, the, these are not the hands of, I mean, if I am to compare her hand with the hand of Zaha Hadid, who painted one nail in blue and another nail in yellow, uh, this is a different kind of woman, you know, a hardworking woman who, and I, I, I know her family was, uh, her mother was a, 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 a seamstress, a, a tailor. She was working with fabrics and her father an engineer. So kind of interesting, and particularly her mother, I think, you know, working with sewing, you know, uh, I, I don't know, I like sewing and I, 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 I think, uh, I don't know, being, having a parent who does that is, 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 is potentially very interesting in your formation uh, as a child. Anyway, here she is in, a, you know, in the position of a superwoman in front of her uh, Agua Tower. Now this is uh, another interesting building for social justice, the Arcus Center uh, at Kalamazoo College. Interesting what she did with this facade, you know, and I'm not sure she chose correctly, but still the facade is interesting, uh, you know, using these fragments of wood. And uh, now, if we think about sustainability, perhaps, you know, we should avoid do, doing something like this. Uh, but um, on the other hand, it's, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, I would like to, to hear what others might think about this. Uh, you'll see how she built this, you know, this um, strange, you know, skin of the building. Um, so this is the plan of this uh, center for uh, social justice or whatever it was called. Uh, that uh, bigger window is here. Uh, this is the conference room, and uh, and um, we'll we'll arrive at that. This is the plan. You see, her works are uh, not really. I mean, if, if you don't know her works, you 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 might not be so sure that certain uh, some of them are are really by her. So she, so she's she's reinventing herself. She's exploring various kinds of architecture. Um, Well, you know, these are institutional, uh, you know, structures or buildings, you know, with, um, you know, public spaces. I wouldn't say they are particularly, you know, original or striking, but, uh, you know, uh, they function. What is intriguing is this facade, which she did with these fragments of wood. Uh, and uh, inclusion, openness, and dialogue. Yeah, this is a good, uh, you know, uh, desiderata, desideratum, inclusion, openness, and dialogue. I don't know exactly, well, maybe these this pieces of wood, you see how they, how they did it, you know, there was a lot of work uh, because this is, this is just the skin, the fascia of, 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 of the building. And, uh, you know, some people work hard I, I'm not so sure, you know, about this usage of, 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 of so much uh, wood, uh, you know, uh, to me, it doesn't seem to be, you know, very um, you know, sustainable gesture, but 
who knows, maybe that wood was, although this is solid wood, I see it's not, uh, and it doesn't look it was uh, discarded or anything. Um, I, I showed yesterday or two, uh, two days before a building in New York where uh, uh, the, the whole building was ornated with, uh, with uh, uh, deformed, uh, crushed, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Pepsi cans or Coca-Cola cans or like 17,000 of them, a very interesting thing. Now that is different from here. Here you used a lot of wood to do this and uh, you know wood means uh, cut down trees and anyway um, I have some reservations about this but aesthetically is an interesting uh, work I think and I still don't know maybe she wanted to do this in order to connect with the trees outside uh, but it's still a, a sacrificed tree uh, model for the slit uh, window, uh, which uh, brings light into the uh, conference room. I like more the trees on the left side. But uh, yeah, there is tension between the human being and, uh, and, uh, and nature. Unfortunately. Anyway, uh, we move forward. Uh, what time is it, Alian? I don't want you to, uh, you know. Uh... Yeah, it's it's twelve forty four here. Uh, sorry, it's twelve thirty four. Uh, I would like to leave soon. Okay, I, I'll try to uh, to end it. Uh, I, we should approach the ending. Um, so the proud architecture elevates the act of convening for social justice. Okay, I don't know about the word proud, but uh, okay. So uh, during the construction, um, it looks interesting during the construction, somehow more interesting than uh, the, the accomplished. Now, this was uh, her first work when she moved uh, to Chicago, returning from Rotterdam, I think, completed in 1988 she did a staircase for the lady where in the house where she rented a room or something i think it's very well done the, this this staircase uh, and the woman who rented her a room said I, I i knew that she was an architect maybe a good architect from from this very thing that she did there anyway another tower that she proposed and it was actually built uh, here you only see the project, and uh, these three are so I don't know if they are finalized, but they are in construction uh, in Chicago, quite big. Uh, so she has a lot of works now uh, for Miami, a prismatic tower, kind of similar with the one in uh, St. Louis, uh, in a way. And I think this is the last uh, picture. Thank you very much.